So I'm going to create an audio track. Oh, an aux track. And I'm going to use this for routing all of my electrical drums to it. So I can use it for the effects for an inf to yeah so I can use use it for effects so every all my reverbs are just gonna come out with the same thing rather than inputting an individual reverb for each one of them. I kinda want all of them to have the same reverb. And so now I'm gonna check if I'm going to turn up the volume to see how much signal I'm, to, I'm receiving from everything that's coming, that's being inputted to this bus, this aux. And after this now, I'm going to make sure that each of the individual tracks, the electronic the, ele the electrical guitars are sending signal through to my boss. And so I've selected my track and I'm going to choose a compressor, just a standard compressor. And I'm going to try and work with a preset and then edit it after to get a more efficient sound or something that correlates with the sound I want to achieve. I'm going to select this one and just see how it's being affected by what I'm doing to it. I, I'm seeing how much gain reduction will be added to it and how much will be taken away and seeing how the sound merges with the track. And so far I'm pretty happy with how it's sounding. And here I've created a, just a normal master fader and for this fader I'm going to use it on to the drums because sometimes the drums when you bounce out they can be they can tend to be a bit louder than what you actually wanted so I've grouped together all my drums as a VCA to the side and I've sent all their signals to the master fader so then I can control everything and keep it. I'll know when I bounce out if it needs to be lowered or not. And it just saves time from individually having to scroll scroll to each one of them and change them up. And it also saves time. And sometimes you've got the jumps exactly how you want it. In terms of um, how balanced you want it. So it just saves you from messing up the settings you have. That's why I have it on. And here you can see there's signal going to and from it. So from this, I'm just going to mess around with it and see which what what signal works best when I bounce when I bounce out the track. See everything now is being controlled by the master fader, fader overall. So I'm planning on panning my backing, my two backing vocals left and right, just so each ear you get something different to the table, and it also clears space rather than having everything in the same stereo field. So I'm just, yeah. So I'm gonna pan my, the first one around about 40, and the other one I'm near around about 40 as well, just so it makes a V shape in the play in the stereo field, and you get a nice balanced sound coming out from each one of them. And from here, I've 
decided to add a bit of um automation to my kit because I find it's a bit too loud within my mix. So I'm just gonna EQ certain parts of the track where the drum doesn't need to be as loud as the others. Or the other times within the track. So I've decided for my lead vocal I was going to use the elastic sound on it as um, well, I'm, going to use, I'm going to use it either on the lead vocal or the electric guitar just to give a, another pitch to the song to have a contrasting sound to it but it will be light so you won't hear it that much but it will be in the track. Yeah, and I'm gonna, as you can see, there's different options. There's polyphonic, there's polyphonic, which is, which you will use if you got more than one note or tone playing at the same time. So an example of this would be like guitar chords, or if you've recorded a band. So that would be useful for that. You also got the rhythmic ones which is for stuff like percussive, percussive instruments or drums. Then you got monophonic, which is for only like one single tone or one single note. So like a simple bass line or a vocalist would have this setting on their track. You also got varied speed, which is to alter the pitch as well as the tempo. And you got X form, which is for rendering and pro audio, and it can't be used in real time. So for this I'll just make sure that as you can see all my vocal nothing's really peaking, nothing's hitting the reds for what I'm doing so far. So I'm making sure that my compressors are compressing as much and my EQ so I can get to get all the high peaks out of the track. So I'm making sure my volumes are all well balanced within the track just so that there's no when when the track is played out you're not going to hear any like brick walling or anything like that you can hear the dynamics within the track so here i'm just making sure the vocals are each each thing is doing what it's supposed to do i've got the i've got to tune it to make sure everything's in key as well And everything seems to be to the right levels. And so one of the plugins I'll be using for the multiband compression will be the Fab Filter Pro MV. Um I tend to use this or Ozone's one, but um I'm giving a try on the Fab Filter today. So I'm just checking each band. I'm just choosing the band so I can see which which sound goes where. So I'm gonna start off with the bass. I'm looking for like the bass sounds within the low end, everything that should be in there. As a pull as I head off air rock, you can start hearing um the 
electro the guitars and stuff that you don't really want in that section you just want like the bass sounds well that's what i'm hunting. that's what i'm looking for within the track then i'm going to move on to each band as i go up Thank you. 